Hey there everyone, this is our last lesson on chapter 5 on trig identities. Our last identity is the power reducing identities. Uh, you do not have to memorize these, I will provide them for you on the test. This is chapter 5, section 5, day 3, power reducing identities. And these three identities are um, methods that we can use to change if we have sine squared cosine squared or tangent squared, we can rewrite them as expressions with no power in them. So we already know how to change sine squared to 1 minus cosine squared, but if we want to get rid of the power, we have to use this form instead. 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, all divided by 2. Um, it's the opposite for cosine squared, and then tangent is its own unique 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 1 plus cosine. Notice that all of these are written in terms of cosine 2 thetas and actually these are derived from our double angle identities for cosine. All right, we're going to get started with the first example. This is asking us to reduce the power in sine to the fourth power of x. So um, notice that none of my identities are, have anything to do with fourth powers, but you can always rewrite powers as lower ones. For example, uh, I can rewrite sine to the fourth power as sine squared, squared. And now I can change the inside here, sine squared x, I can change that to my identity, the first one right here, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So sine squared x, I can change that to 1 minus cosine 2 theta, all divided by 2. And all of that is being squared. That has to be carried down. Unfortunately, we haven't eliminated the power because we still have a power greater than 1, that 2 up there. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify by squaring the numerator and the denominator of the fraction. So this becomes 1 minus cosine 2 theta squared, and the denominator becomes 2 squared. So when we simplify, I have to do 1 minus cosine 2 theta times 1 minus cosine 2 theta, all divided by 4. So I'll go ahead and FOIL this now. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative cosine 2 theta is a negative cosine 2 theta. I'm going to have two of those. My outer and inner are the same, so I have minus 2 cosine 2 thetas. And then when I multiply the last, negative cosine 2 theta times negative cosine 2 theta is a positive cosine squared 2 theta, all divided by 4. Okay, we still have one term with a square in it, that pesky cosine squared up there. So now I'm going to use my second identity, the one that can help me change cosine squared into this. I'm going to replace that with this down here. Now be careful because in our first example we just had um, x, um, but now we have two of them. Uh, I changed it to theta, but same thing. So when I plug in for theta here, I'm not going to just plug in one theta, I'm going to plug in two theta. So I'm going to have two times two thetas. Watch how this works. So I'm just going to carry this down here. One minus two cosine 2 theta plus, now I have my identity, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, but my theta is actually already 2 theta, so it's 2 times 2 theta. Okay, so this was the original 2 theta, and then my 2 that's in front of it came from my identity up here, that 2. Okay, so just be careful when you're plugging in um, to your identity. All of this is over uh, 4 still. Okay, so now we've reduced the power. There's no longer a power in my expression, but obviously this isn't very simple. I have a fraction inside a fraction, and so in order to get rid of that, I'm going to multiply everything by the denominator of this fraction, which is 2. So I'm going to multiply the top of my fraction every term by 2 and this fraction by 2, which will be nice because it will cancel out. And then I need to multiply the bottom by 2. So we get 2 
minus 4 cosines of 2 theta plus, now these 2's cancel out and gets rid of my fraction, so I just have my 1 plus cosine, and I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. 2 times 2 theta is 4 theta. All over 4 times 2 is 8. And a lot of times you'll see them, uh, instead of writing it with a fraction all over 8, they'll just multiply everything by 1 eighth. So generally you'll see the answer is this 1 eighth times, uh, we can combine the 2 plus 1 now, that's 3 minus 4 cosine 2 theta plus cosine of 4 theta. Okay, that's our power reducing identity. We rewrote sine to the fourth x as this expression with no powers in it anymore. And you'll find this useful in calculus when you are trying to take the derivative of something and you don't want to have to have a high power. Um, sometimes it's easier to just use the power reducing and have cosine of 2 theta. Okay, uh, try this one on your own. It's very similar but with cosine instead of sine. Okay, there's the solution to 3a. Um, make sure you attempt these on your own and only continue watching the video when you are either stuck or pretty sure you got the right answer. Um, very similar, the main difference is that you had a positive term here instead of subtracting. Um, so it should have been very similar to the one we did together. Um, our last example is how to solve an equation by using a power reducing identity. So if you have a power in your equation and you're unable to factor it, especially if you notice that one of your terms has a double angle in it um, and you have a powered term in it as well, we know that if we use our power reducing identity that we'll actually be able to combine this with cosine of 2x. So uh, my power reducing identity says that cosine squared of x is the same as 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 minus the cosine of 2x is equal to 1 half. Okay, I've got um, two denominators, both of them are 2 luckily, so if I just multiply all of my terms by 2, I can eliminate these fractions. So I'm going to multiply the first term by 2, the second term by 2, and this last term by 2. So the 2's over here turn into 1. These cancel out and I just have 1 plus cosine of 2x. And then uh, this becomes negative 2 cosine of 2x. So 1 cosine of 2x minus 2 cosines of 2x is negative 1 cosine of x. Sorry, cosine of 2x. And then we can subtract the 1 over. We get that it's equal to 0. So the negative doesn't really matter. We can divide that away. And so now we have cosine of 2x is just equal to 0. So be careful when we solve for uh, cosine of 2x is equal to 0. We're going to solve for what 2x should be to give cosine a ratio of 0. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. But since that's what 2x equals and we're trying to solve for x, we're going to divide both of those by 2. And so our final answer for x is that it should be pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4. And because this is an equation, remember you can always take your solutions and plug them back in to see if it works. Okay, try this last problem on your own. I'll put up the solution. Okay, here's our last problem. Um, this one could be tricky if you didn't realize how to factor cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth. This is a difference of squares, and so we can square root both sides and get cosine squared plus sine squared times cosine squared minus sine squared. Conveniently, cosine squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1 using our Pythagorean identity. And so we just get rid of that and we only have to transform cosine squared and sine squared using our power reducing identities. So don't forget your basics of factoring uh, to make these simpler before you try using your, some, uh, your power reducing identities. Once we do that, we see that we have two, uh, three fractions, actually. These two fractions and the one half that is equal to, we can just multiply everything by two, and those go away. And then it becomes a very basic um, 
trig problem, trig equation. So you combine your like terms. Make sure that when you solve for the cosine of 2 theta that you set that equal to 2 alpha, I should say. You set that equal to 2 alpha and then divide your solutions by 2 to get just alpha. Okay, um, that's it for today. Have a great weekend.